On today's episode, we are cooking in our very first CBA competition of the year. We have some trophies that we found and we really wanted to chase, but we're changing everything up. We're using drums this weekend where I used to use my offset and we're cooking our chicken on our Weber kettle. We also need to add pork and we have 30 minutes less for all of our turn-ins. How are we gonna end up doing? Watch the full video to find out. All right, so today is Friday. It looks like it's 6.41 p.m. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open my fridge, find my chickens or wherever they are. Here they are. I'm gonna find my chickens. I'm gonna grab my chicken brine over here. And we wanna get this chicken directly into our brine. So we are doing a CBA competition today and we're still gonna cook half chickens. We're not exactly positive how we're gonna turn it in, but could just be a half chicken. I know CBA allows for a lot of freedom, so I may cut up the other bird. I don't know. But the plan is likely to just do some half chickens and not really go too crazy here. And the reason is because we've been struggling a little bit with that chicken, but uh, it is what it is. Let's have some fun this weekend. So I've got everything fully submerged. I'm making sure that the breast is under all of the brine. You can see that the leg is popping up a little bit right here. That's not concerning me at all. My biggest concern is to make sure the breasts are fully submerged into my brine. All right, so now I'm going to put my brine back in our fridge that's down here. The next thing I'll do is I'll grab my ribs. And now we're going to go ahead and start working on our pork ribs. Beautiful racks of ribs here we have today. Uh, these are prairie fresh. That's what we've basically been running all year long. They've been doing pretty good for us, so let's see if they can't do good for us again this weekend. We're gonna do the same exact process that we do every single time with our ribs. The only thing that we didn't do this time around, we didn't cut one of the ribs a little bit shorter in preparation for putting it in this pan. And the reason is because we're cooking on drums today. And the reason we're doing that is because it was just a lot more convenient to run drums because of our trailer. Dad actually couldn't come to this competition so it's making it a little bit harder to get around with just one trailer, but we're extremely excited and happy to be running drums. We don't feel like it's a compromise at all. We're hopeful that we can get some nice walks this week. If I don't notice that these things are plumping up nice and thick exactly the way I want, I'll reheat them and make sure that there's a nice definition in that muscle that's sitting right between the bones. They call it the hot dog effect. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna hot dog these. I'm pretty happy with these ribs. You guys can probably see in the camera now, everything is nice and defined in between these bones. And like I said, that's exactly what I'm wanting. One rack down, we're just gonna keep doing the rest. Two racks down. great thing about CBA when it comes to turning in your ribs is you have a lot of freedom. So in IBCA, you have to turn in eight and they have to be horizontal to the lid. And I'm talking about the bones. The bones have to be horizontal to the lid. Here in CBA, you have to turn in at least six ribs and they do not have to be horizontal to the lid. You can put in 10, they can be vertical. You can put in six, they can be horizontal. There's just a lot of freedom. So my goal this weekend is to get that box looking as full as possible, but I do not want to give the judges anything that I don't like. If I don't like the flavor on one of my racks of ribs, I'm not going to force it in just to make it look fuller. I want them to taste good pork. That's my biggest thing, but I'm trying to get tin in there this weekend. Since we're on the topic of pork, we're just going to go ahead and inject our money muscles right now. We're using the same exact injection and I want to inject these money muscles, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to cause any major issues. So since there's a lot of actual muscles around this money muscle, I don't want to separate anything that's in there. So basically I want to inject, but I do not want to over inject these money muscles. There's a lot of flavor in them already. You guys can see that there's a lot of marbling in these money muscles. So they're already going to taste really good. I want this thing to plump up a little bit, but I just, I really don't want to separate everything this money muscle from those other surrounding muscles. So I like to be very careful, not quite a full tube or just barely at a full tube per money muscle. That's two down. All 
All right, now I've got my fully injected money muscles. I'm gonna do the same exact thing with a money muscle and pork butt over here, where the money muscle's here, I'm gonna have a little bit of pork left over on the side. I'm gonna pull this, it's going to go in the box, but we'll show you all of that tomorrow. And just so we're fully done with pork, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna season the top with that base. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, season the bottom on all of my pork ribs. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix up this injection here again, and I'm gonna split this injection between the actual ribs and the butt. We're just gonna let them sit in that overnight. Season the top of all the monies and the pulled. Season all the way around, get the backside a little bit. Not so much the fat, not a huge deal there. Then we're gonna get our injection. We're gonna pour it in, and we're just gonna let these sit in this marinade pretty much all night long until the morning when we're ready to cook these. That right there is our pork. All we have to do is wake up in the morning and then get these seasoned up, put on the pit. Now we're moving on to brisket and the cool thing about CBA here as well is you can turn in bird tins which we are going to try this weekend. Now, like I told you guys just a little bit ago, if I taste something and it doesn't taste good, I'm not gonna force it into the box. So if we taste these burnt tins and they're just not right, I'm obviously not gonna force it. I'm not gonna put them in there 100% just to put in burnt tins. I really wanna turn in burnt tins, but of course they have to taste good. Think about that as you watch us cooking this weekend, is that we are going for a more creative box because we have that creative freedom. And I think that that's so amazing about IBCA, I'm sorry, CBA, I think that's amazing about CBA that it allows you that creative freedom. We love trying to turn in beautiful looking boxes and here at CBA, we can do that. All right, so I did fully separate the point and the flat this weekend. Boom. All right, just about done here with my brisket. I'll go until it burps back at me and basically tells me I don't want any more injection. And that's pretty much what it's doing right now. I want you guys to come in and look at something real quick that I just noticed on this brisket. If you guys look at my brisket, whenever I first actually started injecting, it was looking really nice and straight all the way through. And now you can see right here, it actually fanned out. It almost looks like a, like a guitar pick a little bit. You see how it kind of starts rounding over here a lot. Here in just a second, I'll put this back on the cutting board and I will trim it to around eight inches wide, which is right where I want it to be for my turn-in box. All right, so now we're injecting our point here. I don't want to overdo it. So I'm just going in about inch by inch square pattern here. And I'm just going to inject everything right up. Just a little bit more, probably about half of a tube. And we're good to go. So now what we'll do is pretty much the same thing like we did with our pork. I'm not going to season the point with that base, but I am going to season my flat with that base on top. I'm going to go ahead and flip this bad boy over. We'll put half of the injection in here and the other half over here so now brisket's done friday night preparation is completely done it's right at 803 so it took us just over an hour and a half now it's time to just start cleaning up around here i'm gonna get some shut eye and of course i'll see you guys in the morning good morning it is 5 36 and i'm exhausted because i'll tell you what i'm gonna be completely honest the sleeping situation here is not that ideal gotta figure that out so what i'm doing taking out my brisket and what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and season it up on the seasonings i'm not changing anything at all i'm going to use bell and i'm going to use hospitality the only thing i'm going to do differently on the flat is go a little heavier on the bell on the point i just don't want to over salt it that's my biggest concern is you know i hear a lot of people talk about how salty they can get so I really don't want that to be the case. So I am gonna go with a pretty decent layer here of bell. Go ahead and get my hospitality out and get that coated as well. And right now it is 5.39. I'm gonna put this on at 7 a.m. Don't forget I'm running drums, so I am gonna be running hot and fast. These are gonna be running right around 300 degrees. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and wait until seven. Now I'm just gonna cover that up there. And we're just gonna let this sit out until it's time for us to put it on. Now the one thing I'm actually kind of noticing right now is right here, this part of my point 
He's looking like way, 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 way raised. So I actually think I'm going to cut it right here completely just so it c cooks a little bit more even. And after just taking a quick trim, to me that just looks so much better anyway. It looks a lot more uniform. Probably going to cook a lot more even. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the top with the bell. Like I said, I'm going a little bit lighter here. But it's not like there's no bell that's going to be on it. Then over top with hospitality. And now you guys have seen exactly how I'm going to season this point. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side, and then we're going to start the drums up here in around 15 minutes or so. So you guys can see that I lit the drum here. Pretty simple process. I have some starters in the middle of my lump charcoal and I just lit it up. So we're just gonna let these get up to that 300 degree mark and then we're gonna shut everything down and we're just gonna kinda let it burn out for a minute and then we'll put our briskets on right at uh, 7 a.m. All right, so it is currently 6.51. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get two chunks of pecan wood and one chunk of post oak about the size of my fist. I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off of my drum Hopefully you guys can see in there. I'm alone right now, so sorry if you can't, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these chunks right around my fire. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in my bottom rack here. We're gonna put a water pan on that here in just a second, but I want those wood chunks to start igniting. Let's get some smoke going. 7 a.m. Now it's time to put the ribs into this black drum here. So I'm gonna try and be quick. I don't want anything to flare up. My water is gonna hug one side here. Gotta get my other grate right up top. Close that. It's been 30 minutes on the ribs. What I'm gonna do now is open this as fast as I can, rotate it about 45 degrees or so. We wanna get these cooking at different rates. So far everything's looking good. All right, it's been right at 30 minutes on our brisket. Go ahead and take the lid off real quick. We're gonna rotate it. So now I'm gonna put the flat right over where the fire is. Just again, so we can get a little bit of even color here. We don't want anything to happen to our point. We just want everything to cook nice and even, especially while we're using these drums. at 8 30 so we put the pork butt on at 8 and we're putting the money muscles on just a little bit later now i'm just going to touch up some of the spots that i see are missing the seasoning i'm going to put this back on and let it continue to ride so there's a lot going on right now hit that brisket a little bit i'm going to rotate again brisket's actually looking pretty good it's plumping up on this side this side's a little bit skinny but i think it's going to be okay i'm actually going to go ahead and i am going to flip this Point. I'm gonna leave the flat as it is. I think it looks pretty good so far, but I do want to flip that point I just want to try and get some nice color all the way around make sure we get that beautiful burn in All right, it's been two hours on these ribs I've been rotating them periodically and now I want to get them out. You can see that they're looking really nice I got a good color on there. I don't want them to get any darker. These two racks right here are looking really good this one right here is really small and it also started curling up, so I'm not too happy with it, but it's okay. We're gonna get these out and put them in a wrap.
So it's 9.30, and now what we want to do is make sure my kids are not around, and I'm going to go ahead and dump some B&B briquettes right into the middle of my Weber kettle. What we're doing today is something completely different with our chicken. You guys know that our chicken's been very inconsistent, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to just get back to a good backyard tasting chicken. I'm not promising this is going to work or anything, but it is the best idea that I think that we've had with chicken, and we'll just kind of see how it works out. The one thing I will say is we are going to try and put some sear marks on this. So I want these to warm up. I want these to get really nice and hot. I'm just going to go ahead and close my vents back a little bit. Not very much. I'm going to put my lid back on top. So don't forget with CBA, we are adding that fourth element and that's the pork. So everything's been running a little bit different this morning. CBA, if you want to do CBAs, just think about that. You're adding pork in. And what it really did was it kind of, I don't want to say mess with my timeline, but when I'm normally doing things for CBA, I'm sorry, for IBCA, now you're inserting, you have to do the pork as well right in that. So I was getting ready earlier to inject my chicken and then I got my alarm to turn on my drum for pork. So I was like, which one do I go for, right? So try and do things really quickly. I missed some stuff on film, but of course Sabrina's here now, we should be all good to go. Now it's time for us to sear our bird. I'm gonna get some Pam down. for the front, right? Shout out Bill Purvis. I 100% got that idea from him. Badass boxes, by the way. If you ever watch this, finishing powder. Hopefully you guys can see that box. We just turned chicken in and we really are happy with our box today. We cooked it on the rusty, trusty Weber kettle. It's actually not rusty at all. I just thought that that rhymed. And we just really liked the way that the bird cooked on there. It had a nice flavor. It had that char flavor that I was looking for. We just tried everything different on the chicken. We'll see what the judges think. All right, chicken's turned in, ribs is just about time to turn in. I have exactly 11 minutes to take them out there. So they're just in the smoker right now. It's setting, that sauce is setting over top. We just dunked them, really, really nice hot sauce. 
The ribs are tasting really good. I have one rack that was a little bit bigger where I'd say they might be a tiny bit tight, but it's okay. We're gonna put the ribs on top that are super tender and we're gonna throw 10 in the box. I think we have 10 nice ribs. So we're almost done with this process. And then of course, we're gonna turn around. It's time to start working on pork here pretty soon. pork ribs it's 103 so now it's time for us to start working on our pork we want to start working on the pulled the monies will come a little bit later but i do want to make sure i get the pulled sitting in that au jus that we threw in the wrap all right so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pull this fat cap off the back and that's a good sign right there that it comes off with ease so i want to get this fat off of this this is called the bacon or this is what people call the bacon what i'm going to do with my box today is I am going to turn in pulled on the bottom of the box and then monies over top of it. So there is going to be both as long as it tastes good. You can see everything pulls apart very, very easily. I don't want too many pieces of large fat, so I'm trying to be real careful when I'm pulling. Dang it. Generator issues. We want to go do this outside? Just take this outside. Yeah, so our generator just uh, went off. Uh, got to figure out what's going on there, but we'll figure that out in a second. We're right in the middle of doing this, so I'm going to take a quick bite, and I want to taste this, make sure it tastes okay. Yeah, that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. So we're going to run this for sure, put this at the bottom of that box. So let's get this into the can, bro. I got to figure out what's going on with the generator. It's time to start boxing our pork. We have exactly 14 minutes. Hit a little more sauce over top. All of them. got brushes this weekend and that's why I'm using the back of this to kind of sort of be my brush or like rub it in there it's working okay there's our finishing dust damn that one hold all on the bottom We got 10 minutes to the last turn in 
and now we're gonna start boxing. So this was the first one I cut, right? That's the last meet of the day, so now it's time for us just to wait for awards. They said they'll be around 5 p.m. We feel pretty good about all of our turn-ins. Let's see what the judges thought. Well, as you guys can see, we ended up getting one of the trophies that we really wanted. That's the exact reason why we went to Wharton, Texas, to try and get one of these bad boys. Our ribs have been doing really well. That's two first places in a row. If I could tell you guys one thing that's making the difference on these ribs, it's most definitely that base. You guys saw that we cooked ribs on an offset last time and this time on a drum. Two completely different cooks, but it doesn't matter when you have that delicious flavor. We were also able to grab an eighth place pork with some delicious pork from Boari and Corpus Christi. And of course, we feel like that base just really gave us an edge on this pork as well. I cooked it pretty much exactly the way I do my ribs. So the flavor profile was very, very similar. We obviously missed on brisket and chicken, unfortunately, which the brisket was a little bit surprising to me. I thought the brisket tasted really, really good, and I thought our chicken looked and tasted really, really good as well. We could have just hit some bad tables, but on the chicken, we just haven't been doing well at all this year. We have some plans on what we're gonna do for chicken next to switch everything up. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. If you like the CBA competitions, if you like the competitions videos, you need to let us know in the comments down below. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.